Welcome to another Quest for Metal. We are joined by Altars of Madness. How you doing? How's it going, man? Good to be back. Yeah, um, good to... Well, uh... I say that. It was on my channel last time, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was just, I was just about to say, uh, thanks for coming back on my channel. But I was like, wait, no, I was on your channel. Flip yeah, no, nah, fuck it. We're, we're on someone's channel. <laughs> we're on I the... hope. Who cares? The channel will be in the description, whoever it is. Go check them out. Uh, yeah, yeah we... sounds good to me. We're going to be doing a fun one. We're going to be doing deep cuts from some metal albums that we love. So a deep cut is basically like an underrated song, one that we don't think gets the recognition that it deserves. And we're here to remedy that and talk about how much we love them. we got 10, 10 each, is that right? Yeah, um, if I've counted to 10 correctly, but I can't count, so we'll see. <laughs> Neither could, Sesame could be 10, could be 15. It could be one. Who knows? Yeah, I'm gonna... sure we made that reference last time. Did uh, we? Uh, uh. Oh, yeah. I think we fucking did. Oh my god, deja vu. De- <laughs> hmm. That might be one of my songs. Anyway, um, let I'll let you kick it off with your first song. What's the first? Deep okay, cut? cool. I found this category quite difficult because I don't know what is a deep cut like from these albums. I, it's quite hard to gauge. What it I went kind with of... is not a single and one that isn't super mainstream. That's the main thing what i did good enough for me this is quite an easy one oh, rain and blood. i've oh. gone with rain and blood um the obvious tracks off here would be angel of death and raining blood i would imagine um oh, but i've gone with um I, well, which track did i go for fucking hell <laughs> uh, i went with ep- <laughs> epidemic <laughs> jeez this has gone well already uh i'm going with epidemic off this one wow, uh, so okay. it's quite a short punchy track um, but it's probably my favourite track on the album, aside from probably Angel of Death. I mean, that's Angel an amazing Death, track, let's be honest. But um, yeah, just the kind of drum roll kind of coming straight into it. The riff is quite simple, um, fast picked, obviously. But then we've got like a very, very subtle riff change. And it just, it makes the whole thing for me. It's got a similar sort of feel to like Ace of Spades or something like that, where it's quite simple, but quite it's just punchy. in your face, aggressive, punchy, memorable. Um, and yeah, super underrated. Never hear anybody talking about that one, really. That um, is true. Yeah, Epidemic by Slayer. Remember the name that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did a video like this before, and um, I think I picked Necrophobic as one of my favourites from that album, which again, yeah. I think that's quite underrated as well, but I love both. I love that whole album, to be honest. It's a fucking Same band. here. Fantastic. Um, so yeah. my first pick for Deep Cut is from Iron Maiden. I mean, everyone knows Iron Maiden. Um, my one is... I like to hope so. <laughs> Feel like I've been here before. Feel like I've been here before. Deja Vu <laughs> from Court Somewhere in Time. I mentioned it before. But yeah. Wait. No one talks I, about I this song. I thought you meant the m M&M truck. No, and fuck. No. <laughs> fuck off. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fair enough. I'm off. No, that's all right. Eminem's fine. I don't mind it. But yeah, Deja Vu from Court Somewhere in Time, which is kind of an underrated album in their own catalogue in the early days anyway, because of the synth-driven kind of um, songs that a lot of people kind of get put off, which just like the early stuff. So the album as a whole, I feel it is kind of underrated. But the songs that mainly people play are like Wasted Years, Caught Summer in yeah. Time. Um, those are the two big ones, but no one talks about Deja Vu, which I think has a really catchy chorus. And I feel like the solo in it is one of my favorite Maiden solos of all time. So good, that solo. If you just listen to like, Three quarters of the way through the song, just listen to that solo. So fucking amazing. Pretty sure Dave Murray, I think he had a hand in writing this song, but it's absolute banger, and I, I think it's really underrated. So I think that's a pretty deep cut from a big band. So there's mine. Yeah, pick. no, it's a great pick. I, I made probably across the board, even on albums I don't like very much, like the late stuff. They have a ton of like deep cut tracks that they do really go. But yeah, great pick. Thank you. What's your next one? My next one, I've gone pretty rogue with this one. Um, Uh-oh. I think I've mentioned it before on my, on my channel. Oh, um, Brutality. I've gone okay. with, yeah, so this is Screams of Anguish, their debut, and the deep cut I've gone with here is actually the instrumental interlude um, <laughs> called Sympathy. So that thing, there's no death metal in it whatsoever. This is just a straight death metal album out of Florida, obviously. Yep. Um. But yeah, that track's kind of like a, almost like a synthy horror sort of soundtrack sort of thing. They, they've 
written it all themselves as far as i'm aware they haven't taken it off anything but yeah it's got a similar thing to like phantasm or the exorcist it's got that kind of memorability it breaks the album up beautifully i think it's the third track here yeah third track um i, I just love it. it gripped me the first time i heard it and it, it just creates such an atmosphere for me um it's a weird one because it has nothing to do with the rest of the album i know really, that's but... very strange yeah. i love it yeah fantastic track man i i do really appreciate that i don't think i've ever heard anybody else kind of talk about it or even acknowledge its existence so yeah, yeah i think you're the first go check one. that out yeah um it kind of has parallels to i was gonna put cosmic sea by death which is mm. very similar ish but yeah i do love those instrumentals sometimes on albums they kind of just come out of nowhere and the just really i don't know it just kind of kind of relaxing before the storm if you know what i mean it's like the calm yeah before the storm. true yeah uh great pick actually i didn't i wouldn't I have appreciated that, that. Uh, my no, next I didn't. one. I'd have been surprised if you did. Yeah, fuck. I don't think anyone <laughs> watching this would have fucking probably not. seen that coming. No way. Uh, I bet both my nuts. Bet both of them. Both of them on that. You uh, <laughs> <laughs> <that's> pretty sure. <laughs> um, my next one. All mine are pretty mainstream. You've gone for like some pretty heavy stuff that you listen to most of the time. Most of mine are fucking mainstream shit. But hey, that's all good. All good. It's all good. There's no black metal on my list. I'm gonna not a single bit. Away. Not a single one. Nope. I'm impressed. Yeah, I had to stay away for a while. Only for a day, then I'm back to it. Okay, cool. Anyway, my next it's one's... your interlude. Yeah, this this is my fucking interlude. <laughs> uh, my next one is power metal. It's Rhapsody of Fire um, from mm. Symphony of the Enchanted Lands, which is one of the classic albums. You know, the one with the red dragon and the knight riding it. Um, my one is the Dark Tower of the Abyss. Which no one talks about. I always talk about every track Sword. title. Yeah. Anything with like dark and an abyss and towers, you know, it's going to be good. This yeah. one, the intro is what fucking makes it. It's got like this really long classical intro and it feels like Vivaldi's fucking composed it or something. And then it just carries on through the, through the song as the guitars kick in, as the vocals kick in while it's still going like... I'm just like, whoa, this is fucking insane. This is the craziest intro I've ever heard. And it leads straight into the fucking riffs. And I was like, yeah, why does no one talk about this song? This is a fucking banger. It has organs in it, like the soaring vocals. It's just, I love power metal. And I love anything like that. So this song, mm, it's a good. So that's one of my <laughs> I'll, picks. I'll have to go back to that. Power metal's hit and miss for me. The Most of the power metal I like is kind of on the speed metal side. Like a um, US power metal kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I do like that kind of thing when I'm in the mood. Yeah, if you're playing like Elden Ring. Very true, yeah. The dragons and shit, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Can't go wrong with a bit of dragon. Nope, nope. nope. Don't, know where I was, don't know where I was going with that. So Can't go, all right, donkey. Like, with a bit of dragon, yeah. <laughs> Can't go wrong with a bit of dragon. <laughs> yeah. Which part of the dragon? I'm worried now. Oh, you fill in the blanks, mate. <laughs> Right, uh, I've got a black metal track next uh -oh. from a very, very well-known black metal album. Oh, Transylvanian Hunger. Transylvanian Hunger. So I feel like this album's a bit of a, like, it's one of those albums like we were discussing earlier where the whole thing's great and it's celebrated just as an album. But yeah. for me, oh, God, I'm going to butcher the fuck out of this. It's all in Norwegian. Be um, on the on side two, we've got the track I in Hall Med Flesk Og Mjod. Um, what hole? Believe it or not, believe it or not, I'm not Norwegian. Um, but yeah, that track for me, the obvious pick would be Transylvanian Hunger um, or Scald or, or Satan's Soul. Fucking hell. I've picked the worst album to try and pronounce, haven't I? But um, they're the obvious picks, if you can tell which tracks I even meant there. Yes. This track, though, it's really... This album's a bit of a like repetitive sort of mess. Like the whole thing's just the same riffs played back to front over and over again just to create I atmosphere the production say oh god same it it creates that atmosphere it needs to be like that for me but that track i'm not even going to say it again it's like tremolo picking all the way through but with very very minor sort of um sort of note changes uh, you're sort of waiting for it to do something else because it's just 
the same note all the way through, and then it changes slightly. You're like, holy shit. Whoa. Um, yeah, it, it throws you off with such like small details, and I just think that's genius. I think the songwriting is brilliant on it, um, and it's it's one of those things that's just hypnotic, mesmerizing. I fucking love this album so much, but that track for me, outstanding. I, I imagine it's only a deep cut because nobody can pronounce it well enough to like say that's Probably. my favorite track. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I've attempted it anyway. That's the reason I didn't pick any black metal is because I was going through all the black metal albums and I was looking at all the songs and I was like, I listen to these back to front. Every time I listen to a black metal album, it's album in full. I don't just pick songs out. Whereas I find yeah. it easier for power metal and heavy metal to pick individual songs out. Whereas Transylvania Hunger, I just play the whole fucking thing and I'm just like, whoa, I'm that was the great. same usually, yeah. But yeah. if you told me to name Agreed. any of them, I'd be like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> but again, again, I don't know Norwegian. I know Transylvanian Hunger, that's about yeah. it. But um, Great pick. No, I love that. Um, Cheers. My next one is one where I'm not too sure if it is a deep cut, but I'm going to say it is anyway because my channel. Just go with it. Um, we're gonna go with Scream Bloody Gore, and the song I'm picking is not Scream Bloody Gore because I feel like that's I feel like Scream Bloody Gore, Evil Dead, and um, Zombie Ritual are the three main yeah. ones from the album. So I'm gonna go with Mutilation because okay, I love how insane it is, and I love when he keeps just going Mutilation, Mutilation, Mutilation. Ah! Just fucking goes absolute insanity when that when he just goes Mutilation. Ah! I'm, I just have, want to run around the fucking room like Sonic, just start yeah. beating things up. I love that song. Some people say it's the worst on the album, but for me, I don't know. I really like it. It's probably probably my second favorite behind uh, Ev- Evil Dead's really good. Oh, God, that's too many good songs. That's one of my favorite albums of all fucking time, but Mutilation, I still love that. I love that song. Oh, so, that's, that's a great track. That's one of mine. It's, it's hard to say that it, that album even has a worst track. It's yeah. like, every song they're is all so amazing. good. Yeah, yeah, it's, re- it's really hard. I'd struggle lot- to rank them on there. A lot of people would say Zombie Ritual and Evil Dead are the best, I reckon. So yeah, I've actually go. got that album on here, but not the same track. I was curious to see Ooh. if you were going to wow, say okay. it. So oh, wow. that'll be interesting. I think I've got that like second last, though. So you'll have to wait, I'm afraid. We haven't talked about our list beforehand. This is all complete random. Mm, yeah. So with, uh, I'm curious to see if you've got anything. Mm. that kind of um, crosses over with mine otherwise. But yeah, I'm going with... You're actually in this uh, project, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so no, this is awesome. obviously... Yeah, exactly. Where's my, Where's my... Oh. <laughs> Put it over my there face. There it is. Oh, oh you should have introduced it like he does as well. That looks perfect. <laughs> There you go. Mr. Flap Room over there. Fucking hell. My hand almost did something I would have regretted then. <laughs> oh, of... <laughs> you, you would have. You would have been editing that out, I think. It was like instinct. Um, Put the hat on. It's like, oh shit, no. Don't yeah. do that. Anyway. Especially not wearing a Satanic War Master shirt as well. Oh shit, oops. <laughs> Carry on. You're going to be cancelled this one. So the uh, the obvious tracks off here are uh, Jesus Todd and uh, Dunkle Height, the first two tracks. Brilliant tracks, but I've gone with the third track, which, again, I'm going to butcher the fuck out of this. We've got Urblicket de Tucta des Firmaments. I love that song as well. I was going to put that on my list. That specific track? Yes. I almost did. Out of all the black metal, that was the one song I was going to put on. Yeah, absolutely fantastic again it's one of those that's quite repetitive and then the slight just variations in the riff um it's quite mid-paced and ploddy not too like blasting it's not too no, no, in it's... your face I've, i feel like this album's very atmospheric um yeah. i know bosom is known for that but this really does just create an aura of being in a forest and that track as a black metal track without thinking about the sort of ambient stuff towards the back end just <laughs> epitomizes that perfectly Brilliant stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. And yeah, that that's the last time I'm gonna try and speak Norwegian today. I think. Oh boom. I know. I what know, all right. Doing? Well maybe I might treat you later. Um I'm glad he didn't pick the very last song. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't mind that song, but it just goes on a bit. It, it does, uh, yeah. Uh, that that kind of ruins the album a little bit for me. Uh, it's a classic album for the black metal stuff, but yeah. 
oh no it still it got me into the genre that album got me into black metal so i yeah. still love it even the long track i still love but i don't know it could have been 10 minutes rather than 25 <laughs> I don't need a 25 minute ambient track here. Yeah. No. So, um, yeah, great pick anyway. I love that third track. It's amazing. Um, and I really like your guitar work on that one. Say. <laughs> <laughs> um, what am I doing? Hello, Africa. Are you hungry? Uh, what are we doing next? Is it my number four? My number four? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to go with Death Metal again. Uh, I'm going to go with Cannibal Corpse. From the Bleeding, a lot of people okay. would say. Strip raped and strangled because that's like the big song or the bleeding itself. Yeah. Is Force Fed Broken Glass on that album as well? I can't remember. But anyway, the one I'm going with one the one I'm going with is Pulverized. I love oh, great track. that fucking song when he's like, This isn't happening, pulverized. It's just like a catchy, fun sing along song. Uh, I know Chris Barnes gets a lot of shit for his vocals. Some people hate this album because of his vocals on it, but I I think every song is catchy. I think every song is sing-alongable. His vocals aren't as good as on the uh, Eating Back to Life, but fuck it, who cares? It's a great, great song, great album. And I think a lot of people don't really talk about Pulverized a lot. And I think it fucking slaps. So there you go. It's a great album. I'm kind of in the boat of that's where Chris Barnes started to oh. sound like Chris Barnes does now. It does have uh, that kind of raspy like it's, it's it. crackling a bit your your impression was actually spot on just before <laughs> um just don't do the ease oh god um, no, god no uh but yeah that that track and that album is it's an outstanding album let's be honest um but yeah it's definitely not my favorite uh like album just because of his voice yeah that's fair I'm, a lot of people I'm one of those nerds. Uh, for me it's like e- either my number one or my number two I'd probably say number two because Kill, I loved Kill so much. But Kill's I don't know. Album. I can get over Chris's vocals on it, but I know loads of people can't. So fair play to them. So yeah, there you go. That's my next one. To be fair, though, I don't mind Six Feet Under's first album either. And his voice is really starting to go there. So I mean. True. Yeah. That one's not too bad. Yeah. No. It, yeah. That's about as good as it gets, though. Yeah, after that. It's not too bad. <laughs> or praise indeed. Yeah. Um, I've gone with one of my favorite albums of all time here, another Uh-oh. death metal album. Um, mm. From Sweden this time. Oh, yes. Dismember, it's... like an ever-flowing stream. I mean, they've got a few pretty obvious ones on here. Override of the Overture is the the track off this album, the first track. We've got Skinner yep. Alive, um, Death Evocation. But the track I've gone for is Sickening Art. Um, so I don't actually know if this is a deep cut, but I don't hear anybody mention it nearly as much as those other tracks. Um, Sickening Art has some fantastic kind of D-beat drumming on it, which I just love. The solo is, like, despite the song being really in your face and kind of punchy, it makes you want to run through walls, it's got a really kind of melodic, quite pretty and atmospheric sort of... Um, solo on it uh the it's just yeah it's just punky it's sawing it's got that wonderful wonderful kind of guitar sound it's got everything i want in a dismember track really it's banging that whole album is pretty flawless to be honest oh it's it's brilliant it's another one of those that's never just a one track listen no. but yeah perfect album yeah i i think that may be even my favorite one of my favorite death metal albums of all time I'd probably say. Yeah, it's up there for me, for sure. I love it. Um, all right, uh, number five then for me. I'm going to go with yeah. my favourite album of all time. We're going for favourites now. Uh, still like yeah. Opeth. You know, okay. you know what's going to come. Uh, Moon yeah. La- Moonlapse Vertigo is what I'm going with with this album. Um, loads of people, again, talk about Face Melinda and The More. Those are the two big tracks. Oh, Serenity of Painted Death, I guess, as well. But Moonlapse yeah. Vertigo... I don't see a lot of people talking about that. I just love the melody and I love the kind of acoustic, like the way you can hear the fingers sliding on the strings during the song itself. I love I love a bit of that. I love that in song. I don't know why, but it just tickles my brain. I, I fucking love it. Um yeah, the the fucking when it's like dare to feel death at hand. And I'm just like, whoa, fucking calm down, Michael. Michael, calm the fuck down. His vocals. No, we don't want him to calm down. Oh shit! No, yeah, he's calmed down already. Uh, yeah. Wanted to get angry again. Like the whole... uh, get head up. We need to piss him off. 
yeah, we need to fucking get a feather duster next to him and just start tickling his fucking ears or his balls whenever he, he's <laughs> trying to do anything, go to the grocery store. It's like, Ooh. Is that normally what annoys you? Yeah, if someone's doing that to me. <laughs> you start growling. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I fucking love Midlife's Vertigo. So there you go. It's hard to talk about songs rather than albums. So we're going to do 10 each because, you know, you're going to do it quite quick. Yeah. I've lost all track of time, to be honest. But uh, yeah, yeah my next yes. pick is a band that I know you're a fan of. Some more black metal as well. Might be cheating, not going to lie, Uh-oh. which I'll explain in a minute. Oh, so I've gone with this. That's the this compilation album. It certainly is. So the track that I've gone for is off the Betrayed by the Sun split with Grift. Um, and it is his 24th spring. Okay. Um. And being a drummer, if I told you to like listen to that track and just listen to the drums, you would know exactly why I love that track. It is the hi hat kind of sixteenths that he's using in between. It sounds so intricate and like fiddly, and it's quite a like simplistic song. It's blast beats and then it slows down. It's very sluggish, but then while it's kind of plodding along, you get these little hi hat sixteenths in between. It's just the kind of hair raising shit that I love from atmospheric black metal like this. Um, the the track after this called uh, Autumn in Sepia is yeah, also I, love that. I fucking love that. The can the cannon fire bass drum in that I nearly picked that one, but I've gone with his twenty fourth spring. It, it it's a stunning track. Um, and if you like your drums, especially like kind of twiddly cymbal work, then twiddly. go and give that a listen. Yeah, I I love that album because. I, I like Golden Horse. Is is that one of the first songs yeah. on it as well? That's so good. I think I think that might be the best album, and it's a fucking compilation, which is absolutely it wild. flows so well as an it's album. So good. I fuck it. Yeah, I love that. Great pick, by the way. I didn't think you were gonna pull out some Drew. Holy sure. shit. Yeah. Love um. Him. All right, my next one. I'm gonna. Whoa, I said there was no black metal, but maybe I guess I was cheating. Oh. I, I've uh, got knuckleball. A- a black metal band, which people say, it's not black metal, <laughs> Cradle of Filth, um, oh, Cruelty and the Beast. Again, loads of people talk about, like, uh, 13 Autumn brought a widow, and um, Cruelty brought the Orchids, and stuff like that. Um, Bathory Aria, the big song, but I'm going to go with Twisting the Nails of Faith, I'm pretty sure. Um, I fucking love the creepy almost horror like intro to this song kind of like you were saying with like the uh, one of your picks with like the phantasm and like halloween kind of creepy keyboard stuff and it has the intro to twisting the nails of faith has that in and it just gets creepier and creepier and creepier and then the vocals start shifting and it starts going from one vocalist to another halfway through the speaking section i'm like this is the creepiest fucking intro i've ever heard in my life and then it comes in and the melody is just as creepy throughout the whole fucking song and no one talks about it, but I think it's really underrated in Cradle's discography. Just the absolute horror vibe it gives. I fucking, it gives me shivers sometimes, like goosebumps. I love the horror vibe of it. The whole album has this kind of kind of vibe, but this song especially is just perfect for Halloween and you need to re-listen to it because it's fucking with a bunch of candy some fucking spooky people like go go re-listen to it fucking great great stuff cradle of filth's a band that i've absolutely neglected because i've i've heard a bunch of tracks and none of them i could get away with danny filth's voice Uh, it is a hit and miss marmite completely great and but i do need to give them a fair shot because i it's got everything that i should like it's got the theatrics it's got the kind of gothic elements i need to go and uh give that a whirl that's a kick up the arse yeah, although loads of people say it's his vocals they can't get into, similar like Merciful yeah. Fate, they're like, I, I'd like it if it wasn't sung by a fucking, like, ah! I was going, careful, I'm a big King Diamond. Uh, hey, no, I love here. I love King Diamond, but other people, they can't yeah. stand no, I can see why. vocals. But yeah, yeah. I, I love it, so that's my next pick. Over to you. Appreciate that, and that, I will definitely be going to check that out again. If okay, not, just, just so, check out the intro, even if you don't check out the song. Yeah, true. You've sold that to me at the very least. 
I've picked an album here where, again, this is just a straight through album. You would never, ever think to just put one track on. It makes no fucking sense. Insect Warfare, World Extermination. So this is a grindcore album where it's got 20 tracks on it. It's under 30 minutes long. I think it's about 22 minutes long, 22 to 25. Um, It's one of those where the tracks are super short. You probably, you would think you would get nothing from just listening to one track. But the track I've gone with is Necessary Death here. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's the drumming mainly. Again, I, I'm just a huge sucker for drums. Um, but yeah, it, it's the riff change. It's got a bit of everything. It's got all the tempos and the kind of thrashy drum beat that comes in just to kind of, I don't know, it just brings it all home. It's like the whole track is you raising the sledgehammer about to smash somebody's skull oh, in. Shit. And then <laughs> that kind of that kind of drop as you're bringing it down and finishing the me. job. You it's absolutely me. stellar. It's so brutal. It's absurd. Absolutely killer. Wow. Go and give that a listen. Necessary death. Yeah, I've not heard that, so I definitely will give that a listen after this. Oh, it's, yeah. Try and survive it the first time. That's the main kind of goal. Try not to get a fucking... I've already got a hangover from yesterday, so that was great. <laughs> yeah. Pure. Great I've just pure. about kicked mine. <laughs> I drank way too much. Um... Oh, God. Sam, Sam told me about it. <laughs> uh, what's my next one? Oh, yeah. Um... I'm going for some symphonic metal now. I'm, look at me, Questy's going mainstream. Woo. I'm going to be out of my depth here. I'm going to go with Epica. Deer in the headlights, dick in the mouth. Fuck the dog. Dip in the dog. Um, yeah, Epica. Uh, good old Simone Simmons. I, so I love Epica. I, I don't get the hate for symphonic metal. I love all these fucking female singers. I fucking love them. I'd take them over any boy band or any fucking... A lot of male singers, I prefer the female ones. Not because I'm a simp. I just think they sound pretty, all right? So, so did you read my mind mouth. there? I think you did. <laughs> I think you did. Uh, from the Divine Conspiracy album, which is a fairly popular album by Epica, I'm going with Fools of Damnation uh, because it has like this Middle Eastern vibe. And whenever a song gives me like a Middle Eastern Egyptian vibe, I just I just gel with it more than some Hold of the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> like like Nile or Melakesh, anything like that. It just gives me like a... Oh yeah, I gotta do the fucking <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh. Listen, listen to In the intro. Satanic War Master. Someone's gonna clip that now. Yeah, oh, for sure. God damn it. Um. Anyway, yeah, just just crop me out of it. <laughs> no, put him, dress him up as a fucking sheik or something. I don't know. <laughs> In the background, like a belly dancer. Mm. Anyway, Nobody I don't even wants to see about. that. What am I talking about? Me neither. Oh. What the fuck did you just say? Oh, Fools of Damnation. <laughs> yeah, Middle Eastern vibe throughout. Simone's voice is angelic as hell through it. Because I, it's kind of like an opera. She's kind of like an opera singer in most of her songs. Very high notes. Kind of like early Night Wish with Taya. Um, I just, I fucking love I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I've seen her live a couple of times as well, and she just knocks it out of the park. And this is a song that doesn't get enough love. So I'm going to give it some love right here by completely smashing it by doing some fucking Indian shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, d- I do appreciate that pick, to be fair, because I... S- symphonic metal, like, I find it a bit cheesy, personally. Like, I don't hate it by any means, but it's just not something I would ever choose to listen to. I- I'm with you on the female vocals, though, for sure. They're all so impressive. Um, It's just... It's more the keyboards and the synths and all that. Oh, it gets a bit yeah. too much for me. Um, But yeah. Good pick. I'll have to go and give it a whirl because I, I don't think I've ever listened to Epica. You, the kind of progressive as well, and you have death metal vocals in as well, not just the female vocals. There's the death metal okay, vocals well, in there as well. You sell net more, right? So my next pick is actually a hidden track, and it, so it doesn't get much more of a deep cut than <laughs> that, really. Yeah, uh, that's true. That's true. Black Magic SS. Black Magic. Yeah, Burning Bridges. I'm trying to get you cancelled here, Questy. Quest oh, for yeah. cancellation over here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the track I've gone with is the very, very final track. And it, as I said, is a hidden track called The Bomb. Um, so it comes at the very end of Let the Magic In. And compared to the rest of the album, the, so the, the whole album's quite well produced. It's got like Pink Floyd, uh, Wishbone Ash kind of elements. There's lots of synths. It's 
quite pristine as far as production. The track Dinosaurs got the most hype out of it just because of the wacky lyrics. He's basically singing about dinosaurs are my best friend. I mean, look at this shit. That's the best fucking cover. I've it's seen. awesome. Um, but the the bomb is like a really lo-fi, just out of nowhere, sort of. It's in the same vein. Uh, it sounds like Black, Black Magic SS, but we've got some like almost weird children kind of children singing oh, okay. over the top of it. I don't know who it is. I don't know what it is, but it's creepy. completely creepy. It's Ooh. so, so like catchy. Um, you can't really hear what they're singing. It, it's clean, but it's you, illegible. You can't hear it. Yeah, it's just, it's absolutely fantastic. If you if you haven't heard that album, give it a listen. And then when you get to that, you'll be like, what is going on what here? Why didn't they do thing? this for the full album? Um because it just sounds amazing. I prefer that to the sound of the rest of this album, to be honest. This is their latest wow. one. Um, okay. But yeah, that thing is so weird, and I love it. As soon as you said children, I was like, yeah, that's going to be weird. That's going to be creepy. It's Fucking bizarre. <laughs> I don't even... It, it sounds like someone's voice has been modulated, but it does sound like a child. It's very well, weird. Yeah, I'm going to be terrified listening to that. So that'll be yeah. fun, though. I recommend it. Sleep. Uh, what's my next <laughs> oh, yeah. one? Uh, I'm going to go with some cheesy shit as well. Blind Guardian, Power Metal Let's again. Let's go. Uh, Tales yeah. from the Twilight World. And the song is The Last Candle I'm going to pick because a lot of the set lists, they always have like um, some of the other songs that have completely gone out of my fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of us. I, I had, I, did I write them down? Yeah, like Lord of the Rings, Trials Were in Time, Lost in the Twilight Hall, Welcome to Dying. Those are all the... There's a lot of songs there, but those are all like the classic songs they play a lot. But Last Candle seems to just not get as much attention as those ones. And I feel like it's the best one on the fucking album. It closes it and it's just so epic. Like it's a closer for Blind Guardian. It's just the chorus is just perfect. Um, and the opening where they're like Guardian, Guardian, Guardian of the Blind, Guardian, Guardian, Guardian. And it's just, you can't help but sing along with it. It's it just play it beating. It is. Yeah, you got your breastplate on. It's like, oh, your fucking mace. Uh, yeah. I, I love it. It's just it's just a really fun, sing alongable epic song to close off a great album. So that's my next pick. Love it. It's a great pick. I do like a bit of Blind Guardian, I've got to say. I don't own any of it, though, which is shoddy work on my part. <laughs> My next one is an al- off an album that you picked earlier. I did Scream mention uh, you picked you picked Mutilation. Yeah, Scream Bloody Gore, of course. Um, as you said, Zombie Ritual, uh, Evil Dead. I've gone with Torn to Pieces. Okay, that's great as well. Um, I'm honestly astounded that that isn't more popular than it than it is. I don't really see many people talking about it. It is a bit of a like mid paced sort of groover. Um, it's not as ferocious and in your face as something like Mutilation or Evil Dead. Um, it's kind of, yeah, you <laughs> can like, pop your head along to it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a weird one, but it's just the lyrics are brilliant. Chuck screams when he kind of just, he sounds like he's getting more and more insane as his kind of syllables are being dragged out more. Uh, the chorus, brilliant. Uh, the riffing's fantastic. It speeds up towards the back end with a phenomenal solo as well. Um, yeah, that's my favourite track on this album, personally. Mm. Uh, and it certainly is a deep cut in comparison to some yeah. of the others there. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I didn't even think about that song. That song's fucking great as well. That album is It's outstanding. I love that. Can't album. go wrong with it. Um, all right, my next one. Oh, I missed one. Oops. Uh, my next one. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. This is just shambles, oh, but it'll be good anyway. Ever the professional over here. <laughs> uh, Children of Bodom <laughs> from Finland. Okay. All minor, like mainstream shit. Uh, Follow the Reaper, the classic album. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have loads of classics like Follow the Reaper, Every Time I Die, Hate Me. Those are like the big ones, but I'm going to go with Mask of Sanity because that has just the fucking like the not riff like the melody it's like do 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 it just fucking kicks in with the fucking guitar part playing along with like the synth part and it's just so goddamn catchy i love that melody all throughout the song and then the chorus is great alexi's vocals are amazing and i feel like it's it's just as good as the rest of the songs i mentioned if not better but it never gets the 
time of day compared to the others. But I feel like the melody alone makes that a top tier children Bodum song, if not the best. Oh, big words. There I was go. gonna say. Yeah, that that's a band again. It's always been the kind of synthy stuff that put me off. However, they they have some awesome tracks that are just like prideful in a similar way to like Blind Guardian. It just Pretty makes you much. want to ride into battle yeah. with no clothes on and just a massive <laughs> fucking sword. <laughs> you had to yeah, do the no pick. clothes on, didn't you? Yeah, oh yeah. What if your sword like swinging along and then swoop, slice the salami? That's a risk you've got to take, isn't it? Wise words from Matt. Don't listen to me. Um, my last pick is from a band that you've mentioned, funnily enough, Uh-oh. but um, you haven't made a pick from them. Uh, I've gone with oh, Nile. Oh, yes. Woo. So for the exact same reason as you said, the track To Walk Forth from the fl- uh, from Flames Unscathed, Such a good song. which is the final track on this, that thing just captures the ancient Egyptian feel. I don't know what... So, like, when you think of ancient Egypt, you think of a certain instrument, and I don't know what it is, but that yeah. the guitar sound, when the lead guitars kick in after the kind of mid pace section starts, once you've kind of been blasted through the blast beats by uh, George Kalias, um, it just sounds like that instrument. I don't really know why. It's really high-pitched and eerie, and but again, it just takes you to the desert, drops you off, no clothes on, no water, um, no water exactly. Um, and just covers you in Scarab Beatles, man. It's absolutely oh. fantastic. Uh, I love that thing. It's, it's the perfect closer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's devoured by crocodiles. Oh, uh, yeah. That's great. Just song absolutely, <laughs> absolutely killer. Love it. Um, I love that album. Yeah. Underrated. Very underrated. Uh, there's a later one, but it's stellar all the same. Yeah. That was a great oh. pick. Um, I'm going to carry on with the fucking Egyptian theme for my next, my last Let's one as go. well. Um, my one's called Tutankhamun, and it's from Nightwish, from the very first album, Angel Falls First, because you know, I got I did some epic, I'm going to do some Nightwish now, I'm giving the ladies some yeah, love. Yeah, it's got to be know? done. Um, Tutankhamun, no one talks about it. Uh, I think people mainly talk about the Carpenter and other songs like that, but this one has, again, the ancient Egyptian melody, and it has a flute intro. Which mm-hmm. always stuck in my head because it's like do 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 and it's like that the whole way fucking through. I'm just uh, like do 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 do. It sounded like a pirate theme tune or something when you kind of with the flute. It sounds more Egyptian. I don't know. It's called too common. Fuck's sake. Well, this is true. Yeah. Just famous for his rum drinking. Yeah. Oh, pirates in Egypt. That'd be a cool fucking yeah. It's a, it's a strange uh, crossover, but I'm not against it. Running wild and fucking Zoom, piece of shit, motherfucker. Just been chatting too much shit. Doesn't want me to talk about Nightwish, I think. It was like, that. that's enough fucking shit for today, Questy. Stop talking Box, about all these. Fine. <laughs> yeah, it liked me when I was talking about Death and like all these other bands. And then as soon as it's like Nightwish and Africa, it's like, nah, cut him off. Cut, cut, him, cut him fucking off. Fuck you, poser. Posers are alert. Get the fuck out. <laughs> J Dog must be in charge of Zoom. Ah, uh, he must be. It's like, stop talking about all this fucking pansy ass shit. Get out of here. Oh, God, J Dog, man. Uh, but Bless yeah, him. my last pick was Tutankhamun by Nightwish. So there we go. Do you have any honorable mentions before we leave this shit place? No, my honorable mentions were kind of the latter five, to be honest. Um, Same. Same. Yeah, I didn't pull any more out. Uh, I-, I was struggling with this one, to be honest. Just it how do you decide one. what a deep cut is? Um, Spotify's most popular were quite a that was quite a useful thing, but often most popular are the most recent albums, so it's not that that's true. Great. Yeah, and sometimes there's shit ones at the top, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, or it's the first track because people just listen to yes. that and then get bored halfway through. Yeah, I hate when people do that, yeah. unless it's a really shit album, which case I was okay. gonna say I'll, I'll allow it otherwise, but yeah, unless they hear like graveyard classics and it's just like D and D. It's Dynamite. It's like, all right, turn this up. Ah, oh, see, I, I should really. Somebody asked me to do a full six feet under ranking. No. And I don't know how many six feet under albums I've listened to in full, but it's not many. I, I, I'll, I'll find that a struggle, I think. Yeah, that would be hard. Whoever's done that, I think there's a couple of people who have done that on YouTube, but I don't know how. Yeah. I don't know how. They hate, they hate my guts, whoever asked me to do that. I'll, I'll assume that. Yeah. 
They want you to suffer. Yeah. Well, here, yeah, I'll do it. I'm nothing if not a crowd pleaser. There you go. So, yeah, this has been fun. I enjoyed going through the deep cuts with you. Uh, again, it'd be cool to collab again on another topic. Uh, 100%, man. I'm always up for it. Yeah, maybe on your channel next. And uh, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. So, yeah, that was Altars of Madness. Go subscribe to him. You love yes, fucks. sir. If you um, like uh, listening to someone who knows not about nothing that he's talking about. Someone who knows perfect Norwegian, go subscribe to I, Altars of Madness. I do. I do. Quite famously. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, um, that was a fun little video. Hopefully you guys had some fun, and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal. Bye-bye. Catch you later.